Welcome back to the Jason Rants Show on AM seven seventy KTTH and ninety four point five FM on the Greater East Side. We continue to deal with the fallout from the vaccine mandate coming from Governor Jay Inslee. Folks have just frankly a few more days to go if they want to get the first Moderna shot in order to comply with the mandate to be fully vaccinated by October seventeen. Excuse me, October 18. You've got a few extra days, obviously, if you're dealing with either the Pfizer shot or the J&J. But for so many people, they either don't want to get the vaccine for varieties of reasons or they simply don't think the state should have that kind of authority to demand that you get the vaccine. Some of them are already vaccinated. They just don't want to participate in that particular policy. Mike Hinsey is a community corrections supervisor with the Department of Corrections. He is a veteran of the department. It's a department that's already experiencing a staffing crisis, and he's ready to walk off the job along with a number of his colleagues due to this mandate. And he joins me now to discuss. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. What is your general concern with the direction that the governor is taking the state as it relates to the vaccine mandate? Well, to tell you the truth, you know, you and I are both here because thousands and thousands of people have died to earn our freedom in this country and then to preserve it. And I just think that this is a this is a travesty that a governor can undo uh, everything that people have died for 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 hundreds of years. And when you're saying the people who have died for, you're talking about just our basic freedom of of choice, of autonomy. And, you know, lots of folks have taken that position, regardless, frankly, of their own vaccination status. They just think that this is government overreach. Well, exactly. I mean, our country was formed because people wanted freedom. And for the governor to do this, I think, is kind of desecrating every lost soul that we've had over the past couple of hundred years mm-hmm. who who've died to help preserve it. Did you file a whistleblower complaint? I did. I filed it, I believe it was two days ago. Okay. And my concern was that um, the governor's order was going to be a negligent waste of uh, packed taxpayer dollars, you know, because we have so many staff, whether they're firefighters or Department of Transportation people, police officers, corrections officers, educators and nurses. And we have spent as, you know, a community, so many millions of dollars training these people. And with a stroke of a pen, the governor intends to dismiss them and terminate their employment and it's it's just a in my opinion it's negligence do you have any hope in the world that this complaint goes anywhere in this state well it's funny that you should ask that i uh out of concern for my my supervisors my chain of command i i gave them a heads up that i had filed the complaint and i wanted to let them know and so we had a a team's meeting yesterday and uh, to follow up on this. And they said, well, you know, these sorts of complaints don't go anywhere for weeks or months. So we can't really deal with you on this. However, today, about three hours ago, I received uh, an email from the state auditor's office saying my complaint had been dismissed and it would go no further how weird is that that usually the process takes a while but in this case it was fast-tracked yeah i i'm i'm flabbergasted by it and i i just don't know what to say so now you know i think i have a target on my back i'm a i'm a supervisor for a state agency i have no union representation i'm at will so uh, as of today i've inform my supervisors that I'm I'm requesting family medical leave act because this is this is a stressful situation mm-hmm. and it causes all kinds of anxiety not just for me but for everyone that's dealing with it so I, I'll be out indefinitely until my leave runs out or until 
the governor rescinds his mandate. Michael Heisey joining me on the line. He is with the Department of Corrections. He's a community corrections supervisor. As you just heard, he filed a whistleblower complaint that somehow was dismissed within just a couple of days, which, uh, you know, for those of you who are familiar or even somewhat familiar with any kind of bureaucratic process, generally speaking, things like that aren't fast tracked. He's based out of the Yakima East unit. You know, you're willing essentially to lose your job over this. And I imagine, you know, you just speak to the stress, but what does that do to you and your family if you were to lose this job? Well, it's absolutely devastating. I mean, I started with the Department of Corrections over 20 years ago, and my only goal was to make it until retirement so I could provide for my my family, put my kids through college. You know, I have a, a 13-year-old and a 16-year-old, and at a time when I'm supposed to be making the most money in my career and and facing the biggest bills of my career and and sending those kids to college, I'm looking at being unemployed. So it's not, it's not just for me, it's for my kids and it's for their kids. Really. I'm actually curious. What do your kids think about this? 13 and 16 are old enough to have a general sense of, of, you know, the context of the decision you're making. Yeah. So my, my 16 year old is, fully vaccinated. My fiance that that is in the house is fully vaccinated and, and it's it's really been a struggle in the household to to talk about these things, you know, because they're they're convinced that this is the right way to go and I'm convinced that it's just a gross overreach by the governor and it's it's not about being vaccinated or not. It's about freedom. Mm-hmm. How many other folks at DOC have you spoken to that are in the same camp as you where they're willing to be fired over this, that they they will call the governor's bluff? Well, I would say roughly about 50 percent are extremely concerned, and I, I can't speak to them or what they'll do in the end, but I know that another supervisor that I've spoken to um, – has has just been devastated by this and she didn't want to get the vaccine but she did it because she felt like she was being coerced Mm -hmm. and i i think it's absolutely devastating to people to have to go through that at the end of all of this what if it turns out that the people that we've spoken to on the show are really the only ones who end up taking a principled stand on this and the other folks end up getting the vaccine due to their own, uh, you know, reasonable uh, positions that, that they just want it, or they've felt coerced like that coworker. How will you feel at the end of that if it turns out that's not as many people as you might think who will take uh, uh, basically the, the firing, the termination over this issue? Well, in my own mind, I know. I know I'm going to die, whether it's from COVID or from old age or whatever. I want to die with a clear conscience. And I think a lot of us share the same views and the same values. And that's just how it has to be. Yeah. You know? Well, we wish you the best of luck. Obviously, we are rooting for you. I I am vaccinated. I want people to get vaccinated if they want it in consultation with their doctor. This idea that we should be allowing the government to force you into it, I just think is absurd and and goes way too far. So, Mike Heisey, Corrections Department uh, Supervisor, we really, really appreciate your willingness to tell us your story, and we wish you the best of luck. I appreciate you having me on your show. Absolutely.